and welcome back to the next episode of the MDCP podcast. Joined by the full cohort today of Christina, Ash, and Sam. How are we, good people? Woo woo! Great, nice, awesome. So today, guys, big topic: success. How do you define it? What is it to you? How? What does it look like? And do we ever actually get there as an as an ultimate endpoint? And I was talking to somebody about this topic yesterday and they phrased it to me, you know, if we talk about fitness, there's no actual end state of achieving fitness. If that if that was a case, then Rich Froning would have stopped after year one at the Games. I'm the fittest on earth. That's it. I've achieved fitness. But continually it's a it's a moving target and continues to evolve. So is that the same for success? Are we ever do we ever achieve a state of being successful and go, okay, well, that's it. I'm done now. I can clock out. I am good to go. Um, I'll just sit back and put my feet up for a while. Or is it the same thing? <laughs> I literally and discuss. Feet up as you said that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to put my feet up. I <laughs> I think it, that's a great analogy, you know, and I think of <clears throat> um, Dr. Lane Norton was talking about the, uh, what it takes to see successful like in, in clients who have had massive long-term weight loss and they've been able to keep it off. Like the defining characteristic is they've like changed how they approach things entirely. And what he was highlighting is like, if I do a 30 day cleanse or a six week, you know, beach body program or something like that at the end of it, sure. I accomplished it. I did the thing, right. Am I fit? Maybe I'm fit. -er, right. Does that guarantee that I will never not be fit? <laughs> no, <laughs> not of, of course not. And so, like, in order to keep being fit, I have to continually do the thing, you know. And and anybody who's come into CrossFit or has experienced kind of group model fitness, like for more than a year, they start to realize they start to look down the down the road into the future. They're like, oh, oh, wait a second, this never stops. So I think that's a really I think it's a really accurate and apt analogy to use. And, you know, uh, like to take it to Rich Froning, when the first time he won the games, he might have been like, OK, that was successful, but I wish I had done X, Y, Z better. Right. So like the the goal, if the goal was to win the games, then I was successful in my goal. But is that ultimate success? Like what, you know, encompasses mm -hmm. that term for him and for each individual is different. And I think that's kind of, it's an open-ended, ever evolving and shape-shifting alien, mm. we'll call it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and like, and that's just it, right? I think that um, we all have, a definition of success in our head. But I would venture to say that a lot of people don't have their own definition of success. If that makes sense. Mm. I think that I think that people define success based on like what other people may expect of them or <clears throat> maybe something that they've seen another person um, achieve and they and they want to do the same. But I think that you know, similarly to when we, you know, we talk in here a lot about staying true to your why and your values. If you're chasing after this success that maybe isn't necessarily even your own personal definition of success, you're not gonna get there or, or it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be fun, you know? And I think like mm. success should be fun. It should be sexy, great. Like it should feel good. So I don't know. I just think, you know, we really need to, 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 to define that like for, for ourselves individually. Would you, would you say that you think it's accurate that people have an image or an idea of what they think success is, but they haven't gone so far as to actually define it? Y yeah. Yes. But also like success to you is not the same as success to me. Sure. Yes. And so it, like, just, just like diving in individually, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and we do talk a lot about, you know, 
ecological goals versus mimetic goals and you know versus you know your creations versus what you're thinking you should do or what the the done thing is and you know i agree that we need to have a definition of what we think success looks like to us so you've got something to work towards going well i want to achieve this thing what does it look like when i'm successful at x or when has this mission been accomplished but you're right christina in what you say if it's not something that is you know ec- ecological to you it's not you know your creation and and aligns with your values which is where we see that coaches can i guess get derailed because either a they don't have a de- definition of success of well oh, look at that that's cool <laughs> it's not um, me <laughs> We don't have a definition of success Um, and they don't know where they're going and they go, oh, well, I want to be like Jason Kalipa. I want to be like, well, that's not you. So it's going to be a much a harder road and people will go, well, you're just a, you know, a poor copy of that, whereas you could be an outstanding version of your own, whatever it is that you decide to go with. Lisa, can you cover really quickly for everybody the difference between an ecological goal and a mimetic goal? Yep. So like a mimetic goal is something that is not yours, really. It's it's something that you think is it's given to you by somebody else, essentially, mm-hmm. the, the way that I see it. So it could be, I don't know, anything um, that you think is, you know, it, it might be successful, might be, well, you, you must all get your level four. And so CrossFit says, you know, this is what we should aspire to. Mm -hmm. Whereas for other coaches along their path, you know, that may not be necessarily what makes them successful. Ecological is something that you, or I don't know why I'm talking like you guys, ecological um, is um, (laughs) too much time with us. I know, it's just just all over. it's something that comes within that meets your needs, is driven by you, aligns with your values and intentions, and it makes it way easier when we talk about your intentions for your actions and intentions to align, which you, we talk about a lot on the Fit Affiliate podcast and also hear about, this is where I want to get to, is what I'm doing going to get me there? Yeah. And because it's yours, it's way easier to chase after that. It would be the same, I guess, as in a gym as if your coach says to you, hey, your goal is to do a two-minute fram. It's like, I'm sorry, I have zero interest in a two-minute fram, but I'm happy to work to a 200, you know, 200 kilo back squat uh, or deadlift. Um, and they, you know, they'll be like, no, you've got to do the thrusters. This is what we're working towards. And every week, and you're like, nope, because that's not mine. Yeah. And you feel like a failure constantly throughout that process. You don't enjoy it. I'm not doing the work for it. Um, I sure as hell I'm not coming in doing squat therapy and bar hangs to get better at that because it means nothing to me. Whereas if I came up with my own goal of, yeah, I want to get this 200 kilo deadlift, I'm going to be doing every accessory, everything that I can to get those little hamstrings to grow and, you know, lift that barbell. Does, is that a long-winded way of explaining it? Yeah, that's a perfect way of explaining it. And also I say, screw it, go for the 200 kilo back squat. Like, <laughs> I mean, if we're gonna if we're gonna lift two hundred kilos, make it make it a squat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Again, I'd be like, mm, actually, no, I'd just rather pick it up off the ground. <laughs> I think um, it's also you know, is success a one? Oh, um, I'm trying to think of how to word this. Like, is there such a thing as success? Period. Or is there successful achievements in different, you know, goals and aspects of your life? Right. Because I do feel like whenever you're working towards one thing and if you have a focus on trying to achieve, let's say, for example, because everyone has heard this before, a successful career, Mm. you define success in that sense, but then once you reach that, like something had to give in order for you to get to that successful point, right? Maybe it was family time. Maybe it was your health. Maybe who knows what, maybe it was time with your friends. And then, you know, 
you go back and you go, you know, I really want to spend more time with my family now and I want to be successful at that, right? Like, is there one ultimate success? Well, I think the, I think you're touching on the, the ultimate thing, which is you get to decide. Like if, if I decide that I want to focus on my career, okay, that's how, that's my definition of success for this period of time. And it, it, if I also decide that part of my definition of success includes, I won't do so at the sacrifice of my friends and family, mm -hmm. or I don't give a damn about my friends and family, you know? you get to decide, you know, whichever one you want to be. And I, <clears throat> you know, there was a point where getting my level three was really important. I was successful at that. Would I say my career is successful? So it was a harder question to answer. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it doesn't feel bad right now. So <laughs> sure. Um, and I think for each individual person, was it Bergeron, Ben Bergeron? We wrote Chasing Excellence. He mm. talked about defining success in terms you can control. So I can control, I can't control what the market does, but I can control the effort that I put into my business. I can't control um, how my toddler behaves, but I can control the, the way I carry myself through however he behaves. And so like that, and that's a, a version of successful that I have been focusing on a lot is he's a, he's a toddler. And, and if you've got kids, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And, you know, I had a great, I had a great chat with Drew Zaro of uh, Granite Wealth Management and Wealth Coached. And we were talking about sometimes a net zero is a win for something like that. And I just, I don't want to make things worse. You know, I, mm -hmm. and you know, for me as a father, I have my goals, fitness wise, I have my goals business wise, I have defined for myself a goal when I deal with my sons, because the other one will come along too in his own time. When I deal with my sons, I don't want to make things worse. I want to make them better if I can, but my drop dead is I don't want to make them worse. But again, as well, like you're right that, you know, your goal is I don't want to make things worse, but then mm -hmm. you then need to define what is worse and what is you know, necessarily better. And again, um, I remember Tony actually said to me in a text one day, we were texting back and forth about something. He says, you know, you can't control how the message is received. Mm. So, mm. you know, you can't control and like, you know, talking about things that we can and can't control, but your goal can be in that instance is I'm not going to make things worse, but you can't control how your, you know, toddler or junior terrorist is going to um, <laughs> take that on or deal with that negotiation or or react to that. And whilst you may have been successful in your intention, how do we stop ourselves then going, well, I clearly I sucked at that. That didn't work. I failed. Mm -hmm. So we go the other extreme mm -hmm. and go, well, I'm just a shit dad or I'm just a shit coach or I'm just a, you know, I couldn't get Lisa to that two minute frame. Well, I'm clearly a terrible coach mm -hmm. and I failed. Mm -hmm. Close the doors, I'm done. So we tend to, as humans, when we have an image of what we want things to be or what we think it should look like, if we don't get there, we totally catastrophize. And I'm sure none of us can identify with that in this group don't about, about and and go, I know I've just read vaguely about it, um, <laughs> and go to the other end of the spectrum of being, well, I'm a complete failure. What's the point of me doing this? Right. Yeah. When we may have actually been successful in completing the steps that we needed to do, but we're ultimately, you know, once something goes out, it's none of my business what happens to it necessarily. I can't control the receipt. So how do we then not flip into the mindset of being a failure when if we, if, what I don't want people to get out of this episode is, well, there's no success. That's it. Um, well, why am I trying anything? Yeah, I think like going back and to use Sam with the toddler, because this is, I think, easily. It's going to be a, a Sam therapy episode. Already. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like 
if he handles, you know, his his toddler has a tantrum because he couldn't get what he wanted. He wanted this truck at the toy store, let's say. Paw Patrol. He wants Paw Patrol. All Paw Patrol time. truck, we'll say. Yeah. What is it? Rubble that has the truck? Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I know. <laughs> I remember. Rubble um, on the double. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and Sam handles it in the way that he has defined successful right he's going to be patient he's not going to yell or hit him or whatever and he's going to listen and he's going to try his best to you know diffuse the situation and he gets home and the meltdown continues throughout the night you know sam could very easily be like well that sucked next time i'm just gonna get him the truck like that was horrible right like or he could go you know okay is there anything I could have done differently to help deter his detention or defer his detention to something else that might have been positive? Right? Like it's, I mean, it's like anything else. It could, it should be a learning experience for us. And when we're in it, we can't see it, right? Especially if your patients are tested and your toddler's been screaming for eight hours straight, throwing himself on the floor. You're not going to have that moment when he goes to bed and it's finally quiet and be like, hmm. I guess I could have done it this way, right? It might be a week down the road or it might be the next month when something similar happens. Like, okay, last time, like maybe let me try this mm-hmm. as opposed to being like, that sucked. I'll just get it for him next time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, this, this is like coaching. It's asking questions. <laughs> valid. I'm glad you got here. <laughs> valid, valid. Um, and also like, with our connection of success being like fitness, this is why, you know, like success could very well come on a continuum, just like our sickness, wellness, fitness continuum. Right. Because if you're, you know, if you're thinking of it as like fitness or success is a place where you arrive, well then by that definition, either you are successful or you're not, there's no in between. Right. So like we have to be able to plot, points on a continuum and move as many of our markers in our business, in our life, in whatever we want to measure success with towards the sex su- success. <laughs> that <laughs> that end. Let's work for that yeah, end. That end. <laughs> the opposite end. <laughs> towards I thought, the I- success end of the continuum, right? <laughs> so, um, but I think like when Sam, Sam you started talking and this really resonated with me. You were like, is my career successful? I mean, I guess so. Right. But like, why is it? So the same way that like, we really want to make sure that we don't see like it is either success or failure, but it's like, Mm -hmm. we also have to, to recognize like when there's points of our life that are moving towards the success side of the continuum. Yes. Why is it so hard to acknowledge and 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 accept that 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 is success? Like that something that's something I struggle with. I'm just oh. going to throw it out there. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And I know the answer. It's because the tape I play in my head is that I'm a dog shit human being who's not worth success. <laughs> like uh. and it, and that's and it's kind of a that's kind of hyperbole, but also non at the same time. Like I struggle tremendously with how to feel okay with success in terms of my professional life, in terms of my personal life as a, as a father and as a husband and as a friend, I, you know, trying to talking with, with someone recently about this, I'm very, very good at um, intellectualizing things. And I can, I can break things apart and examine multiple pieces. And to a certain extent, it's a defense mechanism. I can, this is me personally, I can, if I experience quote unquote failure, I am able to intellectualize it and break it apart and then be like, well, I, I did this, I did this in this way and this in this way. And next time I could learn from this and do this thing. The problem, not the problem, but one of the downsides of that is I do the same thing with success. I pick success apart and I see failures in success. And I don't let myself just feel like I won, right? 
And so like, that's a thing I need to work on. Mm -hmm. And it helps that I have definitions, you know, like I have defined success for myself from a business standpoint. And, and going back to that particular comment, like, am I net positive? Am I income positive? Yes, absolutely. Am I where I would like to be? No. Am I closer than not? Absolutely. So by those metrics, yes, I'm successful, but I'm in that messy middle ground where it, it, it feels like the, I'm doing the work that helps me make the steps forward instead of quote unquote, taking the steps. Like there's work that has to happen in order for those steps to actually happen. That's where I am right now. And I think it's really important that we, you know, something you touched on there is we give ourselves the opportunity to get the, to, to recognize the W, to take the win that, you know, I may not be where I ultimately would like to be. Mm -hmm. And who knows if that's actually, that's also a moving target that will change and evolve. But in my head at this time, I'm not where I would like to be, but, you know, this is going well, this is going well. And I know we've talked on this before about um, the Dan Sullivan concept of the gap in the game. Yes. Uh, yeah. The book about, you know, when you're working towards something, it's very easy to sit in a gap where you're like, oh, well, I've only done this, this, and this, and I'm not here. Whereas when we're in the gain, it's like I've already achieved this, this, and this, and I'm on my way. And taking a step to, you know, not to stop where you're at and go, well, this is pretty good. This feels, you know, awesome. I'm successful. Yes. Rather than I am successfully working my way towards X, which is your end goal. Mm -hmm. But giving yourself that that kudos along the way is, is going to definitely help you keep moving forward rather than I have so far to go. I mean, one of my favorite examples I like to use with clients, so you three have probably all heard it at different <coughs> times, is the Mount Everest. Is, you know, the climbers at Mount Everest, you know, they get to base camp. That's like big achievement one. Yeah. Then it's camp one and then all the way back down again. Then they go to camp two, then back to camp one, then back. They, and they zigzag their way up and down this mountain through and have to get through some of the hardest sections repeatedly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yet, you know, they would not say that they're not successful at any part in that journey. Yes, their end goal is to get to the top, but it required some backward tracking, mm -hmm. you know, to then go forward again, but then you come back a little bit, then you keep going forward till eventually you don't come back to the bottom all the way. And it's if they just stopped and went, oh, I've got so far left to climb, I'm only at base camp one, they're going to get outside their tent, they're going to stand in the snow and they're going to go, that's, that's too far. But they know that that's where they're headed, so they just keep working the process. Yeah. Which is, you know, whether it comes to weight loss, fit, fitness, you know, changing anything in your life business, it's, you know, decide your ultimate end point, but then there I go again. But then work the process, follow the process, develop your process and work that process and trust that process. And I know that's yeah. an overused cliche about trust the process, but also give yourself the W's along the way. Yeah. That is I, such a big impetus for the change. And, and you said when you said trust the process, it's like cliche and stuff, but I was just I'm trying to remember what book I read it in, but um you know, it's something like 90% of the work that we do is invisible, meaning like having to trust what we can't see yet and mm -hmm. having to try and be positive when everything seems to be working against us. There's no proof, like you don't see it on paper of like, oh, I was positive, so this happened. But like, that's the stuff that it, it does count. And no, you can't see it. but. Mm. It's, I mean, the process is any, anybody who you have heard of in any space, it, it, whether or not you're in the fitness space, it doesn't matter. Coaching space, business, I mean, everybody talks about trusting the process and, and understanding that it seems this far away. And if you only look at how far away it is, you're never going to get there. You have to. You have to just chip away. And part of that, though, is 
So in the same way that you have to define success, part of defining, I think part of defining success is you have to define what the process looks like. Like you mm. are creating your own path to a certain extent. So like I, I craft a, an image of success. Let's pick a big fitness goal here. I want to qualify for the CrossFit games in two years when I reach the 40 age group for the masters. It's the best chance I'll ever have, right? So in doing so, I am now, I, I articulate what success looks like. In articulating it, I have drawn a roadmap or at least the beginnings of a roadmap for how to get from where I am right now at 38 years old in the next two years at 40 years old to qualifying for the games. Like there are benchmarks along the way there. And so to trust the process, like if you if you haven't defined success, maybe part of the reason trusting the process is so hard is because you have no idea what process you're supposed to be trusting. You know, and and it, when it comes to a when it comes to a goal, whatever it is, whether it's fitness, whether it's financial, whether it's, you know, relationships or whatever, like you need to define things in terms you can control. I can you know, and really, if it was going to be the fitness thing with the with the trying to make it to the games, I would not define success in terms of uh, me making it. It would be me putting forth the best effort possible in order to attempt to oh. make it right. Because the other part of that equation is there are 10,000 other males in the same age group who are trying to do the exact same thing. And I can't control what they're taking for steroids, the fact that they're sleeping 15 hours a day, you know, this person has got red lights and this person's got like a Norma Tech upper body and lower body. Like I can't control any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So <clears throat> let's flip this a little bit to where we talk about, you know, part of the, the mission of MDCP is to help coaches earn money. So it's creating sustainable businesses. And one of the questions that was raised when we bounced around this topic was, you know, how do you see that your entrepreneurial adventures are real and valid and successful? So, you know, you have people seeking you out and I want to work with you. I want to buy your product. I want to, you know, I follow you. I want to engage with you, all of that stuff. I don't know who that was, but good job. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you've got mail. Um, <laughs> but uh, If you know um, what that phrase is from, that tells me exactly how old you are. Yeah. <laughs> I am that old indeed. Um, I will still forever think of 20 years ago is 1980, so that's how old I am. So, um, <laughs> and I realise there are some people listening to this who were not born then, and that's cool. I still like you. But, um, you know, you have people coming to you saying, I want to work with you. I want to follow you. I like what you say. You, you're, you know, your, your opinions are great. How do we then still see ourselves as successful and frame that as successful and realise that what we do is valid, not, you know, need to get a real job? I mean, for many years in the affiliate, I would say, oh, well, you know, I don't have you know, my uh, partner at the time had the real job. I was just getting to play all day. It's like, and, you know, that was an incredible disservice to what I actually did. Mm -hmm. So how do we do that when we, when, you know, we're talking to coaches about creating careers and, and being able to create revenue for themselves as seeing the success in that and seeing it as valid as it, rolls out along the way rather than instantly having a million followers and I've I've sold a million dollars worth of products this week or courses or whatever it happens to be. I think like <clears throat> something that was coming to mind for me, um, I'm kind of like connecting some dots to some of our previous episodes, you know, and, and we had one episode that was a really difficult one to record about who are you outside of X, you know, outside of being a coach, outside of, you know, your career. And it kind of like, I kind of connected it to here because I was like, oh, you know, it's funny because like you can hit these success points, right? You can, you can sell to a client, you can get a new member in your gym, 
you can get a new follower on Instagram. You can get somebody to su- subscribe to your new um, periodical, you know, wh- whatever it, whatever it is. And for like a moment, you're like, yes, I did it. I'm successful. I did it. But it, it, it dissipates. It, 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 you know, it, it fizzles. And so without having this like solid ground, you know, I think it, it's, I can't sit here and say like, oh, you know, you just have to be positive and look at every time you sell something is like, you're successful and you've done it because I mean, I'm a hypocrite. I'm sitting here like, I struggle with the same thing. You know, I have more clients now than I have had ever, which would be an indicator that my business is successful. It is moving towards the success end of the spectrum. And yet, you know, it it just doesn't, I, I can't feel it. And so it just makes me think like, okay, what am I not connected with? Uh, is it like not understanding my own definition of success, or maybe I need to adjust my definition definition of success? Maybe I'm, you know, assuming that a successful business owner has so many clients that they can't even control them. Well, that's not success because that sounds like a mess, you know. So it's like it, it, it's just kind of like it goes back to that definition for me. I think you know, and I think it's just like until you can be rooted there, uh, it's just going to be really hard to recognize and celebrate the successes that you have. Can I ask a very, can I ask a very hard question? Sure. (laughs) Are you defining, are you defining, yeah, you, are you (laughs) defining success or are you defining happiness? Ooh, Ooh. that's deep. (laughs) (laughs) Because they might not be mutually inclusive. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I know, I know for myself, and I'll be very, very frank. I went through a depressive episode because Mm -hmm. I had a, I had a definition for what I thought being successful or being on the road to successful was. And what I experienced was my wife coming to me, who I love dearly and would do anything for being like, we're heading into my busy season and you are too checked out and I need you to come back and like, like plug in with the kids. And like, all of a sudden I realized that like happiness and success were not connected at all. And I was like, Fuck. and then you, and then you're aware of it. And I felt terrible because I, you know, created this situation. So like I beat myself up over, over it and I had to like totally pull, pull back and like recalibrate. And I, I'm not going to say I have it figured out, but I have had to very, very carefully examine any definition or metric for success and make sure that it includes supporting my family. And like that was the, because what I realized, and I had this, I had this conversation several times with my wife where it was, you know, my family really is the most important thing. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this thing and also support my family. And I am not alcoholic, not known for moderation, not known for nuance or, you know, (laughs) threading the needle or anything like that. Like it was like, if, if this, if my family as for me personally, if my family is not okay, if I don't feel like if I'm not happy here, literally nothing else is going to make me happy. You could put a fucking million dollars in my bank account every month. And if my wife and my kids are not receiving the love and attention that I know I can give to them, I will be a miserable man. And I had to, I had to totally redo everything and how I was approaching it and how I think about it and time that I spend on things. It was a pain in the ass. Sam, do you think that one could include happiness in their definition of success? I absolutely do. I, this was my way of saying I was not doing that. Right. I was seek I was looking at the number in the bank account. I was looking at the number of clients that I had and what I realized in very short order is I could be successful and still be miserable. Mm. Successful. And and you quite often see that along um particularly in the entrepreneurial journey where people are they from outside you can look at it and they they have everything and you're like this looks amazing. This is a life I want and then if you are granted 
access to look behind the curtain a little bit. And they're like, no, this I'm miserable. I work, you know, 80 hours a week. I have no social life. I have no partner. My kids don't speak to me. Um, my friends think I'm a jerk because I can't, I don't get back to texts and I leave them on red and all of this stuff. And I feel like all my relationships are superficial, but yeah, like I'm sitting at the top of the mountain. Yay. The people who want to be around me are the ones who want to attach to me because of my success. I want to, I want to make sure I follow up and I close the loop on this. Mm-hmm. Coming back to the point though, of how can we feel like the thing that we're doing is real, right? Mm. I, it would be very easy for me to think, okay, well, success isn't possible. I'm not going to be able to have my cake and eat it too. And it took a mentor coming to me and saying, you're full of shit. You don't know what you don't know. I work half as much as you do and I make five times as much. It's absolutely possible. Mm. And I was like, and it just hearing just hearing that it was possible. He might've been lying to me, but just hearing that it was possible got my brain, the record in my brain to skip for long enough for me to be like, okay, all right, well, maybe it's, maybe the world isn't coming to an end, you know, just that little bit. And so I was able to pause and say, I, I, you will will all remember this abracadabra, right? The definition for abracadabra, I will create as I speak, right? Mm. I'm going to choose to believe that the definition I have of success that includes happiness and contentment with my, with my family, with my wife and my sons is possible. And I have to choose to, to believe that and act as if that is the truth every single time. And for me, to a certain extent, that's how I make sure that I'm, whatever I'm doing feels real. And I don't give over to you know, FOMO or anything like that because I don't have like the Ferrari and the yacht and the crap like that. Like (laughs) it's not, it's not what I'm looking for, but Mm -hmm. I am choosing to believe that this thing that I seek is possible. And I'm so, and because I choose to believe it, I believe it. And because I believe it, I continue to seek it. Mm. And I think that's a, that's a a good point is that once, and we've all done it, like the, let's, oh, well, maybe not, we've all done this, but you know, everyone said the four minute mile would never be broken until somebody did it. And they're like, oh shit. And then within the next year, I think it was 10 people or something like that broke it. And it's like, you know, oh, Everest will never not be climbed. Okay, cool. Someone did it. Now there's thousands of people that do it every year, ordinary, every day, non-remarkable humans. Really? Thousands? Strap- yeah. You, wow. The queue to get to the top some days is huge. You couldn't um, pay me enough. No. No, but you know, but ordinary everyday people that you think are not the least likely will strap on, strap on an oxygen tent, sign up for an expedition, have an expert guide them and wander up that hill. You know, it once you've seen it's done, those barriers become way less daunting. And you're like, well, and I guess part of that is thinking about the, the success is that I don't necessarily have to be the first. But I can do, if we get back to the ecological goals, is I can do it my way. And Frank Frank Sinatra, the shit out of it. Like, it doesn't (laughs) have to, I don't have to be first and I don't have to do it the same as everybody else, but I can do it. Yeah. And the more unique I make it, the more powerful it is. Mm -hmm. Christina, did you just have flashbacks to Diesel Day? So as we get to the end of this one and and start to wrap up, um, final thoughts on is success a final destination? And if it's as the the cliche quote says, it's not the destination, it's the journey that matters. Um, (laughs) If you want to go down that path. But, you know, how important is it to define success, but how important is it to recognise success along the way? And final thoughts. Celebrate, celebrate the little, the little wins. That's success, Mm -hmm. you know, celebrating that. And, and and also like acknowledge the not wins because that's part of success too. You know, I think just 
we are so as humans we're so quick to get out of negative feelings and it's like that's all that's all a part of it uh you know mm. because you could you could quote unquote fail something and then that leads to an even bigger success than some other you know venture so <laughs> i think it's just taking it as it comes and and just you know celebrate acknowledge and uh, appreciate what you're doing, you know, because we're all just working really freaking hard. Mm-hmm. And that's the only thing we have control over. Yep. Do the thing and do it. Do, do you, um, Ash. Um, I think, yeah, like we talked about at the beginning is like defining that for yourself, um, is super important. I don't think there, I don't think there is an end oh, now I'm here, successful and, you know, end tape kind of thing. Um, But I do think that, you know, look, taking the time, like Christina said, to, you know, to compare to Everest, like to look back and see where you did come. And even, you know, those who don't make it to the top of Everest have who have gone from base camp to camp one to base camp to camp one, two or three times, like, that is a feat within itself, right? And to to recognize the, yeah, to use it again, the journey that you did take and what you got yeah. from it because you definitely grew from it uh, in some level. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Sam? <clears throat> uh, yes to all of that. Uh, and... Um, Ask yourself along the way what's going to make you happy as well. Mm. Yep. And what good is success if you're not happy? Yeah. <laughs> if, if you and, didn't put that in there, yeah. And, you know, I guess from my perspective is, you know, is it something that I want to achieve versus what I think that I should achieve? Mm. You know, it's, is this mine or is this what I think I should be doing because, the I think I should be doing is a short track to um, frustration and inaction and, you know, find something that's yours. And even if you think it's silly, like get out of your own way and just do the thing. Like mm-hmm. once you put it out there, it's none of your business. Just go with it and then keep working, keep doing the thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Good chat. I think we were successful today. At having an enlightening yeah. conversation. Yeah. Um, I think we're, you know, being successful podcasters by sharing the information. But to help us really feel successful, we'd love it if you could give this a like, a subscribe, a follow, a share. I know, right? Good segue. Um, please yeah. follow yeah. us at FitFiliate. If you listen to this on your favorite platform, please leave us a review. Uh, drop something in the comments. We would love to hear from you if there's a topic you would like to discuss. Otherwise, we will see you on the next one. Thanks, guys.